What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So I haven't talked about soap skin and bubble in a long time, so I wanted to go back through and talk about how you can create skins and other complex shapes using this extension. Now before I get started, today's video is brought to you by the SketchUp Essentials course. The SketchUp Essentials course is a course that I created to give a start to finish training for SketchUp. So uh, it basically covers everything from getting started with SketchUp, intro to the basic tools, all the way through to interior design modeling, uh, modeling for layout, and also photorealistic rendering. So if that's something you're interested in, you want to get some more in-depth SketchUp training, make sure you check that out at the SketchUpEssentials.com slash course. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so I've talked about this extension before, and I'll link to a couple other tutorials on how to use it. But in this case, I just wanted to kind of run through how you can create some complex shapes and different skins and that sort of thing using the extension Soap Skin and Bubble. And so you can find Soap Skin and Bubble by going to the SketchUp extension warehouse. So you just go up to Window, Extension Warehouse, and you just search for Soap, Skin, and Bubble. And it's going to be this first extension right here. So you're just going to click Download to install that into your uh, SketchUp. And uh, what this extension does is this basically allows you to create skins across different edge loops. And so edge loops are basically loops of edges that kind of close in on themselves. So they have to have three or more sides. So anything from, like if I was to draw a triangle right here, that's an edge loop. So in this case, a rectangle or a circle would be considered edge loops. And the way that it works is when you select your edge loop, and then you click on this button for generate soap skin, what that's going to do is that's going to generate a skin across this face. And the first thing you'll notice is it's got these lines in here. These are your subdivisions. So that's showing you how it's going to divide up this series of lines. And so you can see how down at the bottom it asks you for the numbers of division. And so what that allows you to do is that allows you to set how many times this is getting subdivided. So like for example, if I was to hit enter a value of 20 and hit the enter key, you can see how this is going to subdivide this more than if it was a value of 10. And so the highest you can go is 30. And so you can see how when I have 30, this is a really kind of complex mesh. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the enter key in order to generate a skin across this face. And so in this case, this is a little misleading because this is just a rectangle. So all it did is it came in here and it just subdivided this up across this face. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a second example because that doesn't really illustrate the power of this. And so let's say, for example, that I was to take this rectangle and I'm going to make a copy of it over here using the Move tool. And then let's say that I was to split this up. So I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to divide this line into three. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of the inline across these two points. And so now what I can do is I can come in here and I can select this and I can rotate this up and we'll say we'll rotate this up 35 degrees and we'll rotate this down 35 degrees and then we'll erase out our lines right here and so you can see how if you wanted to you could come in here and you could just kind of fill this in so this was a flat face across here but it, the other thing you could do is if you were to use the extension soap skin you could just select this and we'll say we subdivided this to 30 and hit the enter key. What that's going to do is that's going to create a skin that's going to fill in more organically across this shape. So you can see how you can create a much more organic kind of uh, bubbled shape in here by using this extension. And so you do have to kind of mess around with this with some of these more complex shapes. But you can see the power of this just being able to skin objects. But let's go back to our rectangle example one more time. And so I'm just going to run this one more time. And then now I want to get into the second part or the second function of this extension. So the first function is it'll create these skins in here. And so the skins by themselves are pretty cool, but there's also an option in here for bubble. So that's the third option on here for generate soap bubble. And I'm going to go ahead and come in here and reverse all these faces so that the white face is facing up. But now 
what you're going to do is you're going to select your object and then you're going to click this option for bubble and so once you click the option for bubble what this is going to ask for is this is going to ask for a pressure so you're going to tell it how much pressure you want in order for this to generate the bubble in this shape. So let's say for example I was to type in 30. So what that would do is that would come in here and this would actually apply pressure and do a calculation as if this was bubbling up within this shape right here. And you can actually adjust that while this is live. So I could bring this up to 50 by typing in 50 and hitting the enter key. Or I could bring it down by typing in something like 10 and that would reduce the bubble. And you do have to be careful because if you come in here and you start typing in crazy high numbers, like if I was to start, if I was to type in 150 or 300, you start getting really weird results. So you do have to be a bit careful. Though I'm sure you could do some interesting things with something like this. But you can see how if you overfill your shape, then your bubble is going to get all messed up. So you do have to be a little bit careful with that. And at some point, this kind of uh, just kind of runs off into infinity. You can press the stop button to stop the calculation here. So I'm just going to undo this. And I probably am just going to have to delete this out and just run it one more time. So, and you can do this across all manner and type of different shapes. You could do the same thing right here with this circle, where you could subdivide this circle. And this can also be useful just for subdividing shapes. So, if you wanted to, you could actually come in here and you could use this to generate a grid across this shape. And then instead of, instead of using the soap skin function, you could come in here with something like the smooth tool and you could actually use this to break shapes up so that you could use something like sandbox tools in here. So that's just another option if you wanted to do that. But in this case, what I want to look at real quick is I'm going to apply a pressure of 50 or negative 50 to this object. And so what that's going to do is this is going to bubble up a little bit, but you can see how because of the shape here, um, this doesn't bubble up quite as much as the rectangle does over here. And part of the way that you can adjust that is you can come in here, you can select your object and you can set your soap skin ratio. So your soap, soap skin ratio is basically setting um, how tight or how much stress this places across this face. So you can see how this defaults to a ratio of one. Well, if I was to type in 0.5, you can see how this is going to bubble up a little bit more. So it's basically loosening the pressure that the lines or the grid in here is generating. So if I was to put that to 0.25, for example, you can see how it's going to bubble up even more. So you can use that to create some different kinds of shapes um, and kind of adjust the way that this is working in here. And so the only other thing I wanted to do is just go through a couple other kinds of usages that you could use this for. So let's say, for example, that I was to take this circle and we'll go ahead and move this back. But let's say I was to take this circle, I could also split this in half. So if I was to take this point and split my circle in half and then turn it up like this, what I could do is I could erase out this line and then I could use the extension soap skin in order to create a skin across this face. So and one thing to note when you're doing this is you couldn't take this full circle and put this across multiple lines. So like for example, if I had this in here as a circle and then I drew an arc over the top like this, I wouldn't be able to come in here and generate a skin that way because it's not just a closed loop, it has extra edges, so it's gonna give me an error. So in this case, what you need to do is you need to consider your symmetry. And so in this case, what you would do is you would just set this up where you could kind of flip it in place and then move this back. So you kind of have to use symmetry um, sometimes because this does require three or more edges in a loop in order to work. So not only does this work for simple shapes like this, this also works for things that aren't even along the same axis. So let's say for example that I was to come in here and I was to create a shape, which I have right here, and this basically has an arc 
that's flat. It has a straight up and down line, and then it also has an arc that comes out and around. So it's a very complex shape, and it would be kind of difficult to create a skin in here um, manually, but what you can do in this case is you can just run soap skin in here. And I'm gonna give this a subdivision of 30 just to get the smoothest possible face. But you could actually come in here and you could use this. You can see how this creates this skin in here. And then you could take this and you could use the rotate tool in copy mode um, in order to create multiple different copies of this. And one thing you may want to think about is maybe making it a component first. So we could just call this fin. That way if we decide to change one later, we can change all of them. But you could use the rotate tool in copy mode to create a copy every, let's say, 35 degrees. And we'll type in times 10 in order to create our 10th copy in here. But you can see how that allows you to create this really cool shape using kind of rotational symmetry. And then the same thing here where this is a shape that kind of arcs up and curves around. So this would be very difficult. You couldn't even use the skinning tool in Curveloft to create a skin across this shape. Um, so, but this extension will allow you to come in here, subdivide it and create a skin really easily. So that's where I'm going to wrap up this video. I wanted to go back and go over this extension again just because it's a really great tool and I want to make sure we're kind of keeping the really good tools in the forefront of our minds. So leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Do you use this extension? Can you think of some ways that you could use this? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. Month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.